Okay, I will start uh, with uh, maybe you have already encountered this kind of news. Um, nowadays, loneliness is hitting the deadline uh, uh, head, uh, headlines. It's considered like a kind of uh, disease, uh, pandemic disease. And um, as you already know, even in UK, uh, the government has appointed a minister of loneliness to tackle this, this problem. And all over Europe, uh, there are new campaigns and NGOs working um, to reduce loneliness, especially among all the people who live alone, which are considered the bigger and most vulnerable uh, social group. Um, that is the reason why, lo why loneliness is normally associated with uh, aging, despite this increasingly affecting younger people, for example. As in this case, uh, these campaigns usually draws on growing scientific evidence indicating the harmful impact of loneliness on health. And there are the studies that even show that uh, loneliness is even worse than smoking or having obesity. And lonely people are more likely to suffer from dementia, heart disease, and depression. But loneliness has also been framed as a kind of silent disaster, which come to the fore in the wake of big natural and industrial hazards, as in the case of heat waves. For instance, due to one in 2003, close to uh, 15,000 older people died in France, and a significant number of bodies were not claimed by anybody. When this happens, a strong sense of national shame is prompted, but when economic and social inequalities are considered like natural state of things, uh, this, this, the disastrous consequences of loneliness remain usually unnoticed to the public. In Japan, one of the more aged countries and probably the best prepared for dealing with uh, hazards and disasters, they coin a term which is called kushi, which is lowly death. And this estimated that there in, in Japan, approxima approximately 4.5% uh, of funerals involves instances of lonely death. Of course, it is this way of framing loneliness as a disaster, a life-threatening event, is um, normally urging people to act. And this is also seen as, as an opportunity for the industry of innovation to um, propose and to market new solutions to this problem, normally technical solutions. For example, there is a growing interest in showing that social platforms and digital technologies can have a positive impact in the prevention of loneliness. Indeed, a quite remarkable example of this is Binkles Barcelona, which is a digital platform developed and implemented by the municipality of Barcelona, uh, where they basically they bring, they, they give uh, uh, an, an, an app uh, in, a, in a tablet so people over 65 can get in contact with other people in the neighborhood and also get to know social activities that are happening or organized in the surroundings. But it's also in the domain of architecture and urban planning, so there are new uh, ideas about how cities should be designed in a more age-friendly way. So, for example, in the case of Senior Co-Housing, which is a project that I've been working on as well, uh, they are like redesigning the ho housing, uh, housing uh, solutions for all the people. And most of these solutions, the key point is how to easy social interaction and how to foster social encounters between all the people. But I think, and we think, that uh, framing loneliness in such a way is good to, um, to make people aware of this uh, pressing problem, but has also uh, worrying side effects. The first one is that it can lead to the stigmatisa stigmatization of solitude. Uh, it can lead also to the healthification of all these people's life and to the medicaliz medicalization of social life. Uh, it is also lead to put too much, mo too much focus on measuring and monitoring social relations and less on understanding the purpose and meaning of social relations. And the art to, uh, to act upon loneliness um, may also render irrelevant um, the need to understand how social relations are set in later life in contemporary techno-capitalist societies. And this is actually the goal of uh, We Connect Home. We Connect Home is a, is a project, it's an international project, it's funded by this uh, More Years Better Life 
I think it's a kind of initiative. It's not an horizon, but it's a different kind of funding scheme. Um, and uh, the main goal is to uh, approach social connectedness in later life uh, from a less normative and more situated perspective, because we think that sociality in later life is nowadays extremely complex. And it cannot be reduced only to assessing how well people cope with loneliness or how effective and efficient are specific technologies. We Connect Home is an international research project devoted to the study of technology and social connectedness, but with this perspective. It started in 2018 and it's still, it's still going. There are four in institutions involved, Utrecht University, KTH Stockholm, Trent University in Canada and WOC. And the WOC team is formed by two uh, research groups from Mayan 3. One is Communication Networks and Social Change and the other is Kernet, which is formed by these people. Um, our group is uh, currently working on, on an ethnography. Uh, first of all, I would like to present this is Andrea Garcia Santos Maser, Rosé Benito, Israel Rodriguez, who's here, and myself as a principal investigator. And it's also worth saying that uh, the City Council of Barcelona is collaborating with us under, in the undertaking of the ethnography. Uh, our, our study is like an ethnography study of how people around 78 years old and even above that engage in social relationships using uh, different kind of technologies. And the, the idea is how they create these social relationships and how they maintain these social relationships over the course of life. Our focus then is on how media ecologies and built and social environments, infrastructure, daily life making of social relationships of all the people, and therefore how they also configure ways of doing kinship, friendship, neighborhood ship in later life. So the idea is to try to explore the intersection between media ecologies and built environments, social environments, which is normally not present in the literature. Normally, the literature is focused on either or the other thing. Okay? I would like to present an example in order to, to make you better understand what we are trying to explore. Um, this is the case of Bujra's parents, who are around 70 years old and live in a sheltered housing facility for all the people. They came from Morocco 20 years ago and settled in a few, few years ago. Almost every night before after, after having dinner, one of the children who live in Brussels, Paris or Tanger make a video call on Skype. As in the picture, her mother always expects the children to call. She never makes the call nor hangs it up. This is a family gathering. Bujra is usually there having dinner with them and helping her with the app. These video calls are not only meant to chat, but, do, but to be present, sharing each other's daily life as if they were living under the same roof in the same house. For this reason, these Skype call, calls can last for two or even three hours. Sometimes their siblings are queuing, or their siblings are queuing, and Bujra takes them to call when their parents are, are again available. This is a good, a good example of how older people perform family roles through the use of digital technologies, which some scholars refer as digital kin work. It is a very gendered work, as we have seen. Setting up the time and place for this family gathering is crucial for her mother, who usually prepares food and wants Busra and his brothers to stay overnight. By setting a media ecology in which Skype, WhatsApp, and also Busra are aligned in a particular way, her mother managed to turn her house into a place where the extended family joins together regularly, despite living abroad. Interestingly, though, the design of the flat, it is too small, as well as some of the rules of the facility, children are not allowed to live there, seems to hamper this and has turned out to be a source of conflicts and frustrations for her. The apartment is too small to host the family when they come over, and neighbors complain when the children come and go and stay overnight as this goes against the policy of this facility. This is a place for all the people and not for their families. This example reveals exactly what we are exploring in BeConnect, how digital and built environments can easy or exclude certain modes of making social relations in later life, in this case, kinship. I'm going to talk a bit more about the project in general. Yeah. Um, we are undertaking observations and cultural probes in three di different li living arrangements uh, with people living on their own at home, in sheltered housing accommodation for all the people, as we have seen, and in nursing homes. 
In each scenario, we have involved six to eight participants, mostly around 80 years old, with different social demographic backgrounds, civil status, gender condition, and immigratory background. The methodology we have, we have followed is qualitative and is organized around two different encounters with the participants. In the first one, we conduct observations in place and a life story interview at the with the participants. From one encounter to the other, uh, participants are asked to register uh, their daily life, their social interactions in a diary, and also taking pictures of the places where they have these kind of encounters. And we also interact with them online, even through WhatsApp or other platforms, so depending on the user. Uh, in the second encounter, we elicit a conversation based on the diary and the pictures, as well as a first analysis of the live history interviews. As a result of this conversation, oh, yeah, we, fill, uh, we fill out a printed clock where activities and social interactions are scheduled and put them in relation to specific places, persons, and technologies. So in order to conclude, I would like to stress out the main impacts we are aiming to pursue with this project. The first, and it's, it depends also on the actors that we are targeting. So the, the first impact is in relation to older people and interest groups. So we are disseminating examples or, and images of older people as active agents of technological change that help balancing current stereotypes of technological ineptness and fragility. In relation to policymakers, we aim to contribute to set policies that are more sensitive to the diverse lived realities of older people and less, less inclined to uncritical ado adoption of new technologies. To designers, innovators, and tech companies, for example, we aim to develop methods of involving older people in innovation that could reveal and challenge technological scripts that impose discrimination based on gender, age, class, and ethnic differences. And to conclude, to our, conclu to our coll colleagues, social gerontologists, social scientists, psychologists, uh, we aim to provide insights about how aging and technology are co-constituted. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.